광고를 미루게 해주면 좀 진짜 좋을까? 다시 한번더 하고 싶은 처음으로 목표를 이었던 날인 것 같아요 너무 감격스러웠어요 저 때문에 팬분들이 모두 제 이름을 연창하며 박수 쳐줄 때 몸에서 전율이 그냥 지금의 저를 만들어준 대회고요 생애 최초로 우승하게 해준 외국에서 그렇게 응원을 받으면서 하니까 너무 짜릿했어요 평생 잊을 수 없는 기억이죠 제 생애에 있어서 가장 행복했던 순간인 것 같아요 첫 시즌 때 많은 분들이 정훈이가 우승할 거라고 예상을 많이 했었어요 좀 압도적으로 이기게 돼서 첫 우승이긴 했지만 좀 긴장감은 덜했던 것 같아요 아무래도 박현우 선수와의 결승이 가장 기억에 남고요 그동안 했던 우승 중에 가장 행복했던 것 같아요 그때 당시에 정규 시즌에는 다 4대0으로 이겨가지고 조금 쉽게 이긴 감이 좀 있어서 개인적으로는 오픈 시즌 때 힘들었던 기억이 훨더 좋은 것 같아요 대전에서 해가지고 팬분들이 많이 안 오실 줄 알았는데 생각보다 되게 많이 와주셔서 되게 감사했고 또 대선배인 성준이 형이랑 하다 보니까 긴장이 좀 됐던 것 같아요 그래서 그때는 이기고 좀 많이 기뻤어요 항상 생각나죠 2만 5천여 명 관중 앞에서 우승할 수 있는 게 게이머로서 한번 할수 있을까 할 정도로 그런 소중한 경험인데 그걸 해봤으니까 제가 스타 원부터 하면서 결승을 한 번도 못 가봐서 결승 무대를 진짜 서고 싶긴 해 서고 싶었었는데 그때 이제 소원을 이루게 됐고 어리버리하고 그냥 마음했던 것 같아요 그때 당시 민수와의 결승전이었고 대회 당시에 32강부터 두 번이나 계속 만났었기 때문에 누군가 우승자가 됐으면 참 좋겠다 했는데 네, 그게 또 저가 돼가지고 팬분들도 많이 좋아하시고 저도 경기들도 만족하는 가장 기분 좋았던 결승전 같아요 네. 우승했던 그때는 진짜 어 뭐지? 뭔가 왜 오늘 뭔가 우승할 것 같지 갑자기? 이런 느낌이 드는 거예요 계속 게임하고 나니까 갑자기 좀 약간 압도적인 스코어로 우승을 했더라고요 제가 나와서 이제 막 팀원들이 막, 막 행가리도 해주고 하는데 아막 실감이 안 나요 막 그때 우승을 하고 날 때는 3대 0으로 그 리드를 하고 있었을 때도 우승할 수 있겠다는 그 확신을 가지지 못했었는데 마지막에 지지를 받고 났을 때야 그때서야 어뭐 그동안의 노력을 보상받는구나 하는 느낌이 들면서 너무 감격스러웠고 기뻤던 것 같아요 그 11명 안에 제가 있다는 거에 되게 좋고요 게임 도중에도 이겼다고 생각해서 되게 손이 떨렸는데 정말 좀 눈물이 날것 같았는데 너무 기뻐가지고 눈물도 안 나더라고요 그냥 실감이 솔직히 좀안 났어 해외 나가는 게 저는 처음이었기 때문에 그렇게 높은 곳까지 올라갈 거라는 생각을 못 해가지고 좀 약간 얼떨떨했던 기분이 좀 많았던 것 같아요 외국 분들이 적극적으로 이렇게 응원을 해주셔서 너무 감사했어요 경기하는 도중에는 포기하면서 하고 있었어요 너무 제 생각으로는 그때 너무 불리하다고 생각해서 그런데 운이 좀 많이 따라서 그때 역전을 할수 있었던 것 같고 그래서 엄청 안 믿겼고 좋았어요 주였어요 역대 12번째 우승자이자 자유의 날개 마지막 우승자로 기록된 라스트 디오러가 온다 영원할 것 같았던 8강의 악몽에서 스스로 깨어나다 이신영 선수랑 마지막 게임 하는데 끝나고 막 온몸이 막 떨렸어요 그래서 뿌듯했던 것 같아요 극복을 해서 지옥에서 살아 돌아온 진명과 열정으로 뭉친 저그의 모든 것 어떤 경우가 와도 제가 싸움에서 이기 자신이 있기 때문에 신명의 선수가 뭐 아무리 견제를 하고 뭐 힘든다고 해도 저는 한 방으로 이길 수 있을 거예요 아주부 심볼 강동현 신명의 선수는 첫째 적으로 어떤 연맹적이잖아요 서로들이 되게 그런 자존심을 걸고 한번 싸워, 싸웠으면 좋겠어요 오랜 도전 끝에 협회 최초로 GSL 정상에 우뚝 서다 어, 느낌이 정말 새롭고 잘할 수 있다는 자신감 때문에 네, 이 자리까지 잘 참고 견뎠던 것 같아요 역대 우승자들을 제압한 패기와 노련미로 완성된 최후의 저그 32강 할 때부터 제가 질만한 선수가 딱히 없는 것 같아요 
삼성 큰 노로 신노열 김동 선수한테는 네, 정말 미안하지만 네, 제가 질 수가 없는 경기에 이르렀기 때문에 네, 마지막 자유 날개 우승자 타이틀은 제가 갖도록 하겠습니다 스타크래프트2 자유 날개 그 최후의 우승자로 기억될 영광의 주인공은 과연 누가 될 것인가 강동현 대 신노열 최고의 결승전이라고 뽑힐 만큼 그런 경기력을 보여드리겠습니다 신노열 대 강동현이 펼치는 멋진 경기로 네, 보답해드리겠습니다 2014 핫섹스 GSL 세종원 결승전 지금 시작합니다 So this is it guys, we're going to see who the last champion of this game is before we move on uh, to a new and different RTS, uh, Heart of the Swarm, it's either going to be simple, but we've seen several GSLs, uh, or it's going to be Roro, uh, who's sort of the dark horse coming into this, and has now managed to get this far. Here is uh, Park San Young, our uh, MC here for the Grants. I believe we're going to have a great interview uh, with the two players. Before we go, and uh, John will be translating that for us here uh, in a moment. Oh, 이렇게 많이 와주셔서 감사하고요. 이렇게 힘들게 올라온 결승전인 만큼 정말 열심히 준비했거든요. 그래서 thank you all the fans for coming here today. It's been really tough to make it to the final. So I'm going to do my best. So the all the effort I put in. Video interview. 자 인터뷰 때는 이 신노열 선수의 그 강한 자신감을. 강동현 선수 옆에 지켜봤는데 솔직히 강동현 선수의 결승전 날에 생각한 신들 선수의 실력 어느 정도 되는 선수라고 생각합니까? And what do you think of Roro's skill? 잘한다고 생각하는데 인터뷰 때 자기가 질수 없다고 말하시더라고요. 근데 저도 옛날에 한창 잘할 때 그런 생각을 많이 가졌는데 그런 생각이 어 굉장히 위험한 생각이거든요. 자만하는 자만. So although I think he's a great player, I saw him saying in an interview that he, uh, he feels that he cannot lose. I once thought the same way, and that is a very dangerous thought for a player to have. You should never be over to, uh, you should never be too overconfident. 나도 그런 생각 해봤지만 한 시는 두 시는 진행될 때마다 그런 생각이 과오란 걸 느꼈다라 말씀해 주셨는데 신노엘 선수의 그 인터뷰 때그 자신감 오늘 결승전에서도 유효한 겁니까? 어. 네, 제가 자신감을 네, 되게 많이 내비쳐서 네, 그 말을 지키기 위해 네, 제, 연습할 때 최선을 다했고 네, 오늘 아마 지킬 수 있을 uh, 것 같아서 네, 되게 기대되는 Yes, I, I indeed show a lot of confidence to the interview and I, I practiced a lot of time I put in a lot of time to uh, practice uh, to meet up the expectation And what's your expected score? I expect about 4 2. Uh, you're the first Azuku finalist. There are a lot of fans here today. And what do you think the score is going to be? If I win the first set, it will be 4 0. Otherwise, uh, it will be a close thing.
thank you for your hard work, John. Uh, and now I'm going to be joined with our Tosis. Hey, Dan. Hey, Tasteless. How's it going? Well, Tasteless, is this or is this not the last Wings of Liberty GSL Finals of all time? This is so sick, actually. Uh, and, you know, it's so cool now, finally at this point in time uh, in, in esports gaming where, you know, oh, uh, you know, Wings of Liberty comes out, huge success, very popular. Uh, but, you know, right away, right away, uh, Heart of Storm coming down here. So I think we've gotten to the point in time where Wings of Liberty is very uh, well figured out. Yes. Yes. But it's all going to come down to this moment here. That's real question, man. Guys, um, let me tell you something, guys. There's not going to be any more Wings of Liberty tournaments when Heart of the Swarm is out. No, this is That's literally it. it. So why don't you guys all go right now, jump on Twitter, and hashtag GSL. Let's yes. get this trending one more time for Wings of Liberty, because after tonight, those wings are getting crop faceless. This, this bird will true. never fly again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've done this before, uh, you know, our viewers hashtagging yes, so we've got that uh, number one trending on Twitter before. Let's do it again this time. Uh, spread the word. Tell your friends if they're not tuning already to join us here. Um, all right, so let's talk about the players now. Let's I'm going to make a prediction right now. I'm guessing Roro 4-2. That's also my exact prediction, Tasis. I okay. think that it's a, it's a pretty solid one. These two are complete beasts, uh, and they're both too good to get 4 0 or 4 one in my opinion. But yeah, Symbol is very stylistic. You look at his Zerg Resurgence, you're like, okay, you play in a certain way. You mix it up some, but you have a general style that's different, and it's not the standard, it's not the norm. So that's something that a Kespa based player like Roro, with a team fully at his disposal to figure out exactly what makes Symbol tick, ways to destroy his strategy, ways to play against it. I feel like he's gonna come so prepared for what Symbol's shown so far. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I feel like Symbol's a little bit easier to, uh, to counter than Roro. Roro seems um, like one of those just really well-rounded uh, StarCraft 1 Zergs. Yeah, uh, but we'll see. Exactly. And here's some info about the Hot 6 Cup. And as we see, uh, December 2013, it's going to be the GSL champions and runners-up seeded. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. I cannot wait till we get all the way to December. Yeah, that's that. a little and ways away. But you know what? December is a great month because we're going to have the Hot Six Cup and Christmas Tasteless. That's true, man. That's two <laughs> presents. You know, um, I got to say, this is just so exciting uh, for these two guys. I, I got to say, also, I never expected Roro to be in the finals. I knew he was good. I yeah. expected, like, round of eight or something, but not... Uh, now what we're seeing here, oh, Symbol we thought uh, was going to win a GSL for a while too. Yeah, like four seasons or five seasons ago we were like, okay, this guy's going to win a GSL, maybe this one that we're in. Uh, and now finally he has made it all the way to the finals. You know, when he lost before it was to great players like, for instance, Seed that season we really thought Symbol sure. would win. Close match with Seed where he ended up winning the whole thing. And here he is finally in the finals. And uh, you know what, he deserves it. This guy's been a pro gamer forever, used to be part of Kespa was actually Jadong's younger teammate, Zerg, on the same exact team. So he's learned from the best of Brood War, and here he is in StarCraft II, uh, possibly the best himself. And of course, you know, we've got an ESF player against a Kespa player. Uh, the ESF players are the ones that started playing StarCraft II right when the game came out. Mm -hmm. uh, Kespa was the you know, alliance of all the StarCraft One players. Um, they eventually switched over here to StarCraft II. So we got a little bit of a rivalry here as well. Are we yeah. gonna leave with um, the veterans of StarCraft II uh, you know, you know will, we, will we leave with a veteran uh, of StarCraft 2 uh, as a champion? Yeah. Or are we going to have somebody who was playing StarCraft 1 for about half of uh, Wings of Liberty's release? Yeah, I think a lot of here. the uh, ESF players are probably rooting for symbols, saying, you know, that would be a slap in the face for Roro to take this last Wings of Liberty tournament. All right, as you can see, a little bit of stats here on these players. Note, uh, Roro, uh, GSL ranking 51st, and that is because he is so new. Yes. Uh, to the GSL. Uh, obviously, simple 17th, that's quite high. But, you know, we never got to see him get this far to a finals. Yeah. We always kept saying it was probably going to happen, and so were a lot of other pro gamers. And look at the players these guys have taken out. It's amazing. They've both beaten uh, so many top-end 
competitors. They both took out uh, Marine King, it looks like. Oh, wait, no, actually, we're a lost Marine King, never mind. But MVP, Life, uh, MC, Tasia, Innovation, Curious, Creator, so many, Squirtle, top, top end players, finalists, uh, semi finalists of the GSL. And they have crushed everyone in their paths. And by the way, you know, in the round of four, both these guys had very convincing wins. They did. We both predicted that uh, it was going to be a lot closer. Well, for, we thought for, Innovation would take out uh, its symbol in the round of eight. And then after he took out Innovation that close series, he, he kind of smacked Curious down. Yeah, it was it was pretty insane. <laughs> and, you know, the Taja games, my God. Oh, yeah. Roro. Taja, you know, started out with a strong uh, game one. And as game two, three, and four, and so on uh, unfolded, I mean, Roro just slammed him. Yeah, he really did tasteless. It was it was uh, really kind of one-sided in that point. In now, that as, yeah, and, and as you guys could see here, uh, the symbol, a, a little bit more time, a little bit more presence here historically um, in 2012 GSL. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Roro, again, only really making um, a, 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 an opening here at uh, season uh, four, 2012, where he got to, uh, you know, round 12 of, of Code A. So it's pretty amazing uh, to see that Roro has uh, uh, adapted to the game so quickly. Remember, yeah. this was the StarCraft 1 Zerg. Uh, granted, being a StarCraft 1 anything is going to help a lot in StarCraft 2. That's right. I mean, the uh, so much less time to actually map out this race, and yet here he is now. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this is Zerg versus Zerg. What a, what a fitting end to this, right? Because of course. Just before Just the, yesterday, Kerrigan was defeated by myself. That's true. Artosis so. uh, managed to beat the single player on Brutal. Ah. I watched on the stream. I was cheering for you. Thanks. I was, in a way, hoping that you would lose so I could then make fun of you on air. Yeah, and the, I the was going to say it's too bad Dan, Dan can only do multiplayer because he can't beat the computer. He can only it's play against other humans. <laughs> but no, I, one of these guys going to have to fill in for her, her yeah. pointed booty shoes. And, uh, you know, stop that all off. Um, her biological booty shoes are yeah. pointy booty shoes, I want to point out as well. Um, also, uh, you know, um, it's kind of fitting because we got Heart of the Swarm, the Zerg expansion coming out right when Zerg are really dominating here yeah. uh, in the esports scene, so that's pretty cool as well. Now, here's the map lineup Agalon Flats, uh, Icarus, Belshir, Vestige, Whirlwind, Neo Planet S, Cloud, Kingdom, and Daybreak. Uh, you know, it is ZBZ, so the map pool not as important in, as in some other matchups, but stylistically speaking, some of these maps are going to work out better for Symbol than others. For instance, I feel like Symbol is probably going to like Icarus quite a bit uh, with the style that he plays. I would say Planet S is going to be a really nice one for him as well. Maybe Aqualon Flats, a little bit harder to say with that one, but uh, I'm interested to see what Symbol has planned here. Has he changed the way he's been playing this very roach-heavy, no infester, no muta style that he likes? You know, he likes to go for the late game, and I feel like Roro is a little bit more well-rounded uh, in that regard. Roro can do he absolutely just, he's, anything. Yeah, he seems he's, to be an incredibly flexible Zerg. He's a StarCraft 1 macro Zerg, right? He, yeah, he has yeah. Basically one of the highest skill sets of skill sets, you know? Oh, yeah. He's just, he can do absolutely anything with his yeah. play. No, you got that right. So I I don't know. I'm also really curious to see how they're both going to play on Icarus. That's going to be an interesting yeah, map to watch that'll be the coolest as well. One. I think so. It's probably our weirdest map. I definitely, I would All say. Right. So map one, Akalon Flats. The players have uh, their equipment set up, their settings to what they are most comfortable with. And, uh, you know, they've already prepared builds. Remember, you know, with, with the best of seven, it's it's pretty hard for the guy that had less skill to, to lose. So that is true. The better player will win yeah. today. So you, you know you gotta remember, um, and we talk about this in every finals, but let's talk about it here now. Uh, when do you cheese? What maps do you have the special uh, you know uh, strategy you can only pull off one time? Uh, what is the map you're gonna play your standard plan? What's the map you're gonna try to trick them on? Give yeah. them information uh, and then use that uh, you know to falsify what's actually happening. We're gonna find out soon. As the players have requested the game to begin, game one between Symbol and Roro in the final Wings of Liberty GSL Codex. Who 
lose that tasteless. And in the bottom right, we have our Zerg player legend. Will he become the champion? He is... Ajuk Shim. opposite starting location in the blue the dark horse of this season's GSL will he be the champion now guys once again get out there hashtag GSL and tell that's on Twitter of course and tell everyone to watch because we all know we've seen people in the past week or two you know saying Oh, you know, it's a ZVZ Finals. It's Wings of Liberty. I just don't care. I don't think I'm going to watch it. Well, do you know what guy who said all that, which is a lot of guys? Me and Tasteless have a virus on your PC. And we saw that you were watching Harlem Shake videos on YouTube the other day. And I can tell you a lot of things that are a better usage of your time than that, the least of which is not this GSL Finals. <laughs> Oh man, this is going to be so cool. Um, and I think this should be one of our closer finals ever. Yeah, it, it definitely could be close. I don't think it's going to be like our last CBZ finals. Or, no. Oh, no, no, it, I think it is going to be like that. Not the one before that, though. Where, okay, yeah. Where Ness T just borrowed. Was Lucera. He yeah. bopped Lucera. Yeah, there was a bop in there. Yeah. Well, uh, as we see, Symbol did beat them last time they played, but that was in 2012. Who even knows how many years ago that was? That was some time ago. That's like BC and StarCraft two years right now. Um, all right. So as you can see, they're both uh, going to go ahead and throw up their hatcheries. And uh, spawning pools are coming up uh, in just a little bit now. Uh, they're doing slightly different openers uh, as far as the drone speed time now, but they're going to end up in roughly the same place. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's that's generally how something that's not crazy and ZDZ goes. All the builds kind of go towards the same spot, and it makes sense because you know what you need by a certain time. Yeah, to exactly. Stay alive. Now, um, let's talk about ZDZ in general. I know we have a lot of people that tune in, um, you know, to StarCraft 2 that uh, only will watch the finals. Yes. Not, every, not everybody has the time uh, to watch an entire that's GSL. True. That is a lot. Uh, so, you know, ZBZ, uh, early on, well, obviously they can get all their overlords around the map, uh, and there's really no way to deny their overlords from getting out there. There's no anti-air beyond the queen, which isn't fast off of creep. Yeah. So, now it's pretty hard to surprise the other guy. If you're going to surprise him, you want to stockpile a bunch of links. Exactly, um, yeah. And then run out and get there as quickly as humanly possible, make a beeline to their base. Uh, so that you can actually um, you know, catch them off guard. Of course, if, if you don't do any damage with any kind of surprise attack, with any kind of surprise rush, that means they have more drones in you because all Zerg units besides the Queen come from the same place. They come from Larva. So if you're making Zerglings, you're not making drones. Uh, so it's kind of a seesaw that you got to balance out uh, strategically and economically uh, when you enter into this matchup. Yeah, you've got to know, you know, uh, are you on the seesaw right now and you're the, the bigger person? Are you the parent and your five-year-old's on it? Well, then you're going to have to move closer on the seesaw to make it work correctly. There you go. Exactly. I have uh, seesaw experience now, Daisy. So we do see both players uh, getting their baneliness and speed, and we do have quite a few lings being made here. Yeah. Uh, a Pretty large number of links actually being made. Uh, and as you said, our toast link speeds on the way. Now, you, uh, these band links here are going to be used defensively. Uh, if they're going to be used offensively, we would see them uh, be more outside of his opponent's base, just like we're seeing these band links being used right now. That's right. So he's going to try to get in here and do some damage. Uh, that spine crawler should be uh, rooted in time. And, you know, remember, these band links connect with uh, the drones or the zerglings. That's just huge. Yeah. Now, notice he is spraying them out so Baneling Splash doesn't hurt him as bad. Oh! oh, that was so close, but with the Spine Crawler and a Queen as well. I'm not sure how much these Banelings will do. They're trying to run in around the side. And in fact, they do get in, oh, but... Oh, getting closer, but that's not going to be enough damage. And this attack was completely deflected, symbol in fantastic shape. That's right. He took some damage on his drones, but unless Lings get in there right away, those drones will heal up, so... Not an effective attack there by Roro. Yeah, uh, bruising any Zerg units is never enough. You have to kill them off because they are obviously going to heal uh, by themselves a little bit later on. Oh! Whoa! I can't believe there wasn't a detonation there. Uh, Bailing's now coming up. Oh my god, and look at this. The amount of things these guys are juggling right now, not even getting some of these detonations off. It's an, an amazing thing. Now, we do have 
symbol here with a much quicker layer going up as well as double evolution chamber. And I gotta say, I'm not too surprised to see that. That is very much so his style. Yeah. Yeah, not a shocker there. It looks like we're gonna have uh, aggression uh, yet again here with Robo coming up. Now, there's a lot of Banelings, so Simple may try to do another attack in just a little bit because uh, he has invested in those. We have Banelings, though. Uh, Roro's coming down here now. Okay, a nice exchange there, actually, at least for Simple, as uh, Roro's not going to do much more with those, uh, that one Baneling, and that will force Roro to turn around. And you know what, Tasteless? This is actually Simple changing his style overall to fight against Roro. Symbol's style, we've seen it before and we'll see it again, is to get 1-1 one, one and get a lot of roaches out and start to push around the map. But that's weak to lots of speedlings and banes. So Roro has gone ahead, got no speedlings and banes, but Symbol saying, okay, I'm going to still do that strategy, but first I'm going to go speedling, baneling to hold off your speedling, baneling. And it's a perfect choice for the map, a perfect choice for the situation. Yeah, I'm really impressed to see Symbol mixing it up. I was worried about this uh, coming in here, is that if Symbol was not flexible enough with how he played the game, Roro would just engineer a build that would uh, disarm yeah. him immediately. Uh, now we got the Roach play uh, entering here now. This is sort of like part two. Uh, of ZBZ, Act 2 in the matchup. That's right. Uh, and of course, we're going to go with uh, two investors along with that. Now, this is a pretty open map. Uh, so which means there's lots of different angles you can attack into each other, but hold that thought. This hatchery is getting low, and it does get canceled. Uh, the drone does not get picked off here, but more bailings are coming down right now. And he has to avoid those bailings symbol now. Uh, going back out, he's going to get the drone. He does get the drone. Oh, and his own bailings coming in as well right now. And oh! oh! Beautiful detonation and right there. Right. What this means, everybody, is that it's going to be it, take even longer right now for Roto to acquire his third. Meanwhile, the third base here for Simple is about to complete. And not just that, Tasteless. He's going to have his 1-1 one, one on Roaches pretty soon here. Uh, and he, he's going pure Roach. This is absolutely fantastic for him, whereas Roro is trying to squeak out Infestors. And this is exactly what Simple's strategy is good against. There, I don't think that Roro's going to have enough Roaches to hold off the first attack from Simple. And the constant rally, seriously, Tasteless, Simple is playing this so well, and I already got nerd chills. No, I, I, I am loving what I'm seeing here. Uh, and that 1-1 one, one, uh, just now finishing. Uh, now, we do have some investors. I like the creep spread here, by the way, for Roro. He's got his uh, spine crawlers up here in a spot where they can defend. Uh, I, it's quite possible that the entrance to his main uh, and his second base might be a bit exposed. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of roaches gathering up here. Oh, man, and Roro. I, I, I would not be shocked if we see a timing coming up here yes. from Symbol uh, just trying to kick in oh. the entrance of uh, uh, Roro's base. Look at how many more roaches he has right now. Those four infestors popping up. I don't know if those are going to be enough. He is making a lot of spines because he knows that Symbol does this type of thing. But will the four spines, far less roaches, and four fungal growths be enough to hold back this huge army? All right, the roaches are now coming up. If he does survive this, it's going to be thanks to the spines and a few good fungals. But Lo yeah. it looks like he's going to go. Oh, no, he actually has to. Okay, he's spread out here to try to minimize the amount of damage fungals can do. And he just ran his lings in while his roaches approached. He's deciding now that that is a little bit too much. And it looks like he wants to go home for now while he is getting another base. And he's going up to Hydralisks. And also note that this third base does not have any drones mining at it. Uh, I assume that those drones were evacuated when the lings came in there. But again, uh, Symbol uh, now not just one step ahead, but two steps ahead. And beautiful play here by Symbol, uh, contaminating that evolution chamber. He is just doing everything in his power to continue to be ahead. That is right. He does have the far bigger army, but let's not forget that Infestor Tech becomes very, very important over the course of a long game. And Roro continues to add some Infestors where he can and continues to get a more energy. So. I, I'm, I'm saying that Roro actually isn't in too bad a spot. He's held off any timing attacks, and even though Symbol has a bigger army, if Roro stays defensive until they're both maxed out, then what is what is Symbol going to do against all the fungal growths? Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, conversely, though, I, I, it does not look like Roro is going to be able to take a third for a while. Um, and that's going to be problematic because if Symbol does this right, he can get a really nice contain. Yeah. Well, we will see <laughs> what happens with this. now. We do have a second evolution chamber finally going up for Roro, and that is uh, definitely something he needs to do. He does not want to be two upgrades behind, even though he will be for a short time at least. But he does not want to be walking out here. This is easy, easy, overextending a little bit. Yeah, um, looks like we've got some roaches now coming out here. 
And this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, we're getting into the phase right now in TDC where there's a little bit of downtime as they're both massing up. And uh, we're having to wait for that engagement to occur. Oh. You know, uh, I, I love the fourth base of Symbol and the just continued macro style. He's getting so many Hydras out. Look at that. Oh my god, he's making 12 more roaches right now. And as 2-2 two -two finishes for him, that's going to be a perfect time for him to move out on the map a little bit more. And in the meantime, he's grabbing his Investor tech and going up to Hive as well as getting a macro hatchery. So he is getting ready for all scenarios because he does have that bigger economy right now. Yeah, he is he is gearing up, and that uh, Hive obviously going to help a lot with 3-3. Three, three. As you can see, um, at the fourth base now uh, being fired here for Roro. And uh, we're getting to the kind of the boiling point here. There's really not much left that these guys can tech to. There's not a lot left yeah. that they can uh, try to get at. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Mm. I'll be interested to see what he wants to do with this Hive tech. You know, this might just be for him to start 3-3 three, three immediately. Uh, you know, the Ultralisk Cavern would be kind of an interesting choice because it does well against Investors, but I don't think that's what he's going for here. I think it's. I think the Hive really here for him is is to get that 3-3 started uh, most promptly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, now there's Creep is being spread out here. They want to make sure they can cover each other's bases. Another base over here in the upper right being acquired now for Symbol. I do like the usage of Burrow here. Mm -hmm. You want to have as much information on the map as possible. Usually, endgame engagements in ZDZ, they'll send a small group of roaches out to a location where the army is not, try to hit that, maybe even send a second group of roaches somewhere else to hit another location, and then finally try to attack into the other player, uh, into his main army, hoping that it's going to be in a bad position, and therefore you'll end up with superior bungles. Yeah. Well, right now we do have a group of lings on the map for Roro. That's going to force a cancel on that. That uh, very crucial fifth base for Symbol. That's something where we're really... Oh, wait, no, he just ran by it? Okay, oh. there you go. He is going to force that cancel. That's an important moment, and he is moving down at the same time. But I don't think he's ready for an attack at all. That's a bunch of planes that are using up supply that aren't useful for anything other than a little attack like that. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to go and let those lanes be cleaned up right now. A nice contaminate there on the hive, and he's not going to get that investor. Close call there. Every investor is so important. We do have that Spire now started for Symbol. He did get the 3-3 beforehand, though. That's really what he was aiming for at first. And, you know, as his bank continues to grow, which, as we see, is, is growing quite rapidly, he's going to be able to switch it up into Broodlords if he uh, so does desire. And that's something that we're actually going to have to have Roro really look out for. If right. Because Broodlords are amazing. Listen, guys, Broodlord and Fester, Wings of Liberty, that's what it's all about. That's, that's, what, the that's how we ended it, yeah. Okay. Fungal so. plus Infested Terrans with a maxed out army is pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. And we see that, in fact, Roro is preparing for this through his own Spire and his own eye. And we saw one brief Fungal there, which uh, triggered Roro to back uh, out. Um, Obviously, they both want to have their creep on the map here. They can't retreat with their hydras unless they're on that uh, creep. Continuing to move back and forth. A lot of posturing here on the map. The spire's almost done. Yeah, the spire's going to finish up for both players. A ton of spines going out. Look at this. He is going full on turtle mode, Tasteless. And this is the symbol we're used to seeing. This is symbol he here. Had, he had that um, really uh, unique uh, style opening up, mixing it up. But now he's to where his strong point is. Yeah. He's to where he can get all those spines up, uh, you know, and, and he can turtle if he needs to. He can push out. He's going to have uh, the ultimate map control. And Symbol's really the best at this yeah. in the entire world. And now we know for sure he's going to get those Brewlers, that second Spire going down there. Huh. So he's totally. going for the late game here. I, I tell you what, Tasteless, if Symbol was a medieval European knight, his flag would just have spine crawlers on it. It certainly would. That, that would, be, would be the symbol of his house. <laughs> Oh, oh nice fungals. Oh, really nice fungals on those hydras. Oh, and he just barely doesn't get yeah, them. Yeah, I thought he was going to get them. One more would have yeah, been pretty taking uh, fantastic them out. there. Uh, yeah, but when you consider how much hydras cost, you take them out like that, that's just huge. Oh, that's, that is it's a big deal. Now, you know? in case you're wondering why he's not mining uh, minerals here, uh, he doesn't have enough drones right now to do that. He's going to just kind of secure these locations, yeah. get the gas, because he needs that for the broodlords. And then as he mines out each base, he'll then transfer drones uh, to the next location. That's right. Now we do have double Spire for both players and a Nidus network. Oh, this is up. so smart. So he's going to try to Nidus worm this guy somewhere yeah. in his base, hit him hard while he's teching the Broodlord. It's super if, intelligent. If uh, Roro tries to counterattack, he just pops back out of his Nidus worm. Yep. Uh, just and, send a and few and through. Defense. Yeah, so this is a bulletproof 
This is basically a like un time for yeah, him. an almost unstoppable transition here. Now he's he's doing it exactly how he should face this. He's moving his spines up. He's not overextending any defense. And here we go. The Niners. But it's been on spotted. Away. It's been spotted. Oh my God! Quick eyes here by Roro. Immediately seeing what's going it's down. Gonna be, it's going to be shut down before it can yeah. get in. Nice Very save there by Roro. Catch. Super important catch right there, Jesus. Rude Lords are morphing. Yeah, and we do have drops even on the way right now for Roro. These guys just have so much money that they're like, well, I'm going to get every single tool available to me, except Ultras, because they are not good against Rude Lords. Yeah, believe it or not. They're not as good. They're good. In fact, in Heart of the Storm, they might even be good against Rude I heard in Heart of the Storm, the Ultras are going to have an upgrade where they can parkour upside cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we got a lot of spine crawlers here, and that's only, in case you're wondering what happened there, that's only so we can make more brood lords. Yeah. That's how you can end up with more supply than the uh, game basically intended for you to be able to get. That's right. And we're actually getting to the point where they don't even really want that many drones to be out. Look at their drone counts. Very, very low right this now. This is like supreme end lane game. No, and they haven't had a battle yet, Tasteless. Really? really? When you think about it. For about, uh, what, like... 12, 15 minutes. They juked and jived with lings a little bit, but yeah. nothing serious. The symbol just took an early unit advantage and played perfectly, so Roro couldn't ever attack him while he took all these bases. And now, now we're going to see a Broodlord battle. All right, they're pushing out now. This is going to be brutal, their guys. Spine crawlers. This engagement is going to be huge. Oh, my God. We're going to have Broodling versus Broodling, Tasteless. This is how it goes. This, way, this is how it happens. And, look at and he's pushing forward with these uh, spines. He, he is. I'm kind of surprised by that move there. Yeah, he wants to pearl some offensive spines here. Yeah, I'm not sure like how useful that will end up actually being. But, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have to see here. The thing right? is, Broodlings are fighting against Broodlings, and he can't bring his own units up to stop those. So it's kind of a smart move when you think of it that way. It was but, one of the only times I've actually really seen Broodling versus Broodling like this in a cast yeah. and match. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing to see. <laughs> um, well, he's got to use the spine crawlers to target down the other spines here. The roaches are starting to push forward. There really is an art to this, guys. Yeah. And now uh, he's going it, to he's going to continue to try to close in. He's got a nice room right behind that, so he can reinforce. So the supplies are stagnant right now. This is kind of insane. It is insane. And the thing is, you have to figure out what you want to do here. Look at this. 11 brutes against 10. Uh-oh. Oh. Well, this is all going on. And He's going to be able to go inside. It looks like he died. Roro figured this out in time. The He's going is, inside the Nidus. And it's going to finish just in time. Oh, my. Oh, my God. That's a huge mistake. Yeah, those uh, infestors are not going to be too useful oh. there, but... Nice move over there with the Infested Terrans going up at Roro's uh, third base. Yeah, he needs to target down that hatchery. Or it's yeah, not he's actually up. messing that up and a little he's bit. He's going to die. It. And yeah, a big blender there. He could have had that hatchery for free. Life's short, Infested Terrans. Get to work already. Uh, that's, that's pretty rough for him. All no. those little moves he did were really quite nice, but they all failed. Now he does some the uh, the burrowed uh, road, uh, investors, excuse me, up there inside the main base, but he's also hitting this hatchery down here. Uh, I gotta say, Symbol's still doing a slightly better job than Roto of just being in more places at once. Yeah. He's also managing to get that expansion up in the upper right. And uh, this is this is madness, tasteless. These broodlings just are never ending. And in fact, you can see that Roro's even getting melee attack now. That's gonna help his broodlings. As hilarious as that is. Yeah. It's actually going to help. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's thrown some infested Terrence up here over by the hive. The hive's getting low. I don't know if he's going to be able to save it in time. Meanwhile, more roaches coming over here to this location where the hatchery has been injured. And I think he's going to get that third base. I don't think he's going to get the hive, though. Oh, it looks like he's going after a few more drones. Roro, though, has a gigantic bank, so that's not a game end or anything. Yeah, both these players actually have a lot of money in the bank right now. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like he's also going to get this uh, hatchery over here. Yeah, uh, Symbol like just everywhere at once. Remember, Symbol predicted that if he won the first game, he would win probably 4-0 or 4-1. Wow. So That's a strong that's statement. That's a strong statement. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, he's taken this out. It looks like the Hydra's here to clean up, but oh so too late. Here they are. And he's slowly making headway over here, and that's uh, primarily due to the fact that some of the main army is having to be pulled back over here. Yeah, he's actually... 
he's trying to not fight Broodlings as much. Like, he's moving in with the Broodlords to snipe things and then letting the Broodlings do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. It's and like, that's, it's a smart move. You you know, at this point, with all those Hydras out of position, he can definitely snipe a few things. All right, as you can see, we're getting closer here. Uh, he's slowly closing in. And know that the uh, bank's slightly lower now here for Roro. I think we're probably going to see another uh, calculated attack over here from uh, Symbol if he keeps this up with his economy. It is going to be superior. He has more room to make mistakes. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a few things that Roro does have working for him. He does have that uh, plus two melee about to finish. That's going to help his Broodlings do better in the battle because uh, Symbol only has plus one. He also has draw attack. So that can be helpful. He has more Broodlords as well. So yeah, gonna, absolutely. His Broodlings are definitely going to start cutting through. Yeah, we're going to see that happen in a moment here. Uh, the Broodlings are Broodlords are continuing to push forward. I have never casted something like this, guys. Yeah, we have. I have never. We have casted probably more StarCraft two games than anybody on the professional level, and I cannot. I mean, can't believe what I'm seeing here. I've never seen it last this long. Yeah, I've I, seen. Broodling, broodling every now and then. Yeah, you see it occur, but this is just, this has been going on for like five minutes. Yeah, this, it's like a never ending battle right now. It's funny because they both fired. That means that then they, they're, they're more the Broodlords will continue to target out uh, more. Um, Look at this. He just, just 12 more spores so that he could start more investors. So that was really smart. Yep, super smart. But no, it's so funny because but they both. Oh, hold that thought. We got the oh. nice sniping there. Took out one Broodlord. And remember, every Broodlord counts. And that's where the Broodlings are coming. You take out a few of those. And suddenly, Symbol gets an overwhelming advantage with the Broodlings. And is able to push forward on the ground. Uh, and could possibly um, start at the beginning of the end of this game. Yeah. Uh, this is just complete madness, Tasteless. The amount. I just want to see. You know those charts at the end that you probably don't ever look at? Yeah, I never So look badly at do I want to see how many units were killed this game. Oh, no, no kidding. Look at oh this. my god, he's Time. going in! Oh, we got a lot of infested terrors being thrown down here, which could gun down all these Broodlords, but so many Broodlings are already out that they seem to be able to do the damage to those infested Terrans. He does push back a little bit, doesn't want those infested Terrans to be able to shoot his Broodlords right now. And Roro is pushing forward. Can Symbol hold on this location? Well, it's time for some of his infested Terrans to come out. Now with the Infested Terrans out here, it's a little bit more damage that can sponge up those Broodlings. Uh, he's also hitting from the side here, trying to just take out a few more Broodlords. Adventures coming down here to try to get another Fungal off. Yeah, this, uh, I guess as of this game, StarCraft 2 is officially free to play. <laughs> <laughs> All these uh, free units fighting each yeah, other man. days, this is kind of wild. Pretty insane. Um, uh, well, it well, looks like Roto actually managed to gain some position there. I thought uh, Simple was going to pull that off for a little he bit. He did. He made a strong move there. And he's actually making some lanes right now because he's run out of his gas with all his uh, refills. So what is he going to be able to get done with that? He's going to have to well, be very mobile with I his think, Yeah, I think what he can do is he can start counterattacking in all these different locations. Yeah. Uh, and, and then try to take out Symbol's base. And Symbol does have a base advantage here. But, you know, when somebody has a base advantage, it means they don't have an, uh, an ability to control that much of the map. So that's how you punish that. And links are probably the best way to go. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have uh, two bases being taken out. One for each player. Symbol moving his Roaches around, whereas uh, Roro utilizing his entire army at the moment. Uh, even though Roro won that battle and pushed through, well, kind of won that battle and pushed through, it doesn't mean that he's, like, super ahead now or something, right? Because they're both still sitting up at max, and there's way more gas in the bank for Symbol. So he still has a lot of options that he can do. He still has a very strong army, a ton of Broodlords, a ton of Investors, a ton of Hydras. And he's actually throwing away a huge amount of Roaches now to refill with better units. You can see he was trying to get a fungal off on those Broodlords yeah. after he threw off those, uh, those Infested Terrans. It's a pretty crazy game. We're already about 35 minutes here. Pretty epic ZVZ, Artos. Yeah. It's like a supreme late game ZVZ, the Death Balls. Uh, probably the strongest thing in StarCraft 2. Yeah, stronger well, than a maxed out mech army. Broodlord and Fester with the right composition uh, can beat anything. Oh, you, really. you get the Spine Crawlers, which are mobile so that accompany the army. And no supply. Uh, and if you escort around, yeah, no supply. You got the Broodlords over here, which uh, are, you know, kind of speak for themselves. They do, they do so much damage and shoot got infinite Broodlings. You got the Infestors. Uh, which of course have the fungal and the infested Terran, so you can even if you're uh, beyond max out at you know uh, 210 of 200 supply, you can make even more units out of that. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the hydras, which deal so much damage, you can cover all these other units very very well. Yeah. 
Um, you know, so we have these two death balls here in the end game. Uh, both players trying to figure out how to get around each other's death ball. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. Uh, two death balls fighting each other lasts a very long time. Now these links, I love this little move. Yeah, this great is usage super of minerals. smart. And they they have plus three. Oh, he's gonna go for the spire. Almost. Ooh, but that's not the important spire. The greater yeah. one. But if he, is if he gets down to that greater spire though, oh. which he's headed down towards now. Oh my God, that would oh, be huge. Oh wait, he's going for the extractor, which is probably the least important building on this entire map. All right, he's hitting the greater spire now. Greater spire getting low. The upgrade uh, has not completed. Oh, that is so. And painful. he's gonna get the spawning pole as well too, potentially. Such a great move here by Roro. He needs moves exactly like oh that. Oh my God, this is a game changer right here. You know, if if he can get something done before Greater Spires back up, there's also don't forget there's uh, no plus three armor still. Symbol d still doesn't have that, so he's against yeah. three three with just three two. This is insane. Um, looks like he's gonna try to go out here and try to get this other base. Now remember, their minerals are dwindling in, in the bases close to the main. Uh, both of their mains, I should say. Yeah. So uh, that's another factor here. Is even though we saw these guys have a lot of money, and they are basically both rich, as far as minerals and gas go, and huge armies, that, that's becoming uh, not as much of a possibility anymore. As you know, these outer expansions are much easier to snipe, such as this one that's taken out right now. Yeah, those are bases that will those ever really be taken? They're like the high ground bases in Daybreak, where it's like, well. You'll fight over oh, those you mean a top little bit base in the late and, and bottom base. Yeah, 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 twelve and six. It's just it's not common to be able to actually mine from there in a split map, split map situation. All right, uh, we have some long distance mining, by the way, from Symbol over here. Yeah, this is an important base that he's taken here in the top right because Symbol hasn't taken his in the bottom left, so that's going to allow Roro to rebuild his bank. Now uh, we got the Brood Lords and the Investors slowly moving up. And it looks like he's going to go right back down. You know, it's really hard for either of these guys to engage the other one full on. And you can even see them, if, if, if they do force an engagement, they're almost in this weird gridlock state. You try to run away, you're going to get fungal. You have to sit there, both the broodlings are coming out hitting each other. Now, he is making a lot of spines over here, and those aren't ones that he's going to cancel. You normally make scores to cancel. Uh, but we do see Symbol continually make scores and cancel and get his supply even higher and higher and higher. We've got some chain leaves coming out here. Have to target each one individually. <laughs> and you know, I got I, I do believe that Roro is going to keep this base up here secured. Oh, Whoa, we got another engagement fungal being thrown down here. A, a lot of invested Terrans. So much going on right now. It's difficult to follow. And it looks like that many infested Terrans is going to force Symbol to walk back for a moment. Some nice fungals going down on the front. Root Lords can't actually pick any off, though. So many fungals down here right now, but so many infested Terrans coming out. Uh, and another fungal over there on the Brood Lords. Can he get another one off? Oh my god, he's got no, them pretty low on health overall. He can't lose those. Don't forget, there's no greater spire. Yeah. Symbol cannot lose these Brood Lords. That could be checkmate if he loses the Brood Lords. Yeah, right, Artos, as you said. He cannot remake them right now because he doesn't have the greater spire yet. And it looks like slowly but surely, I believe Roro is managing to carve his way through this army. All the Brood Lords are so badly bruised. Roro is very violently rolling up this stream, Tasteless, taking out these Brood Lords and putting Symbol on the run. I think these <laughs> Broods are going to be taken out. The Brood, are, are the brood Lords are on the retreat. Corruptors coming in here to clean them up. The map is now Roro's for the taking. Huge moment there for Roro. Very well done. Symbol running back and looking at Oh, he's making him dance. GG. Up 1-0 right now is Roro. Symbol playing brilliantly in the early game, but it was not enough. Roro beating Symbol at his own game, the end game. That's right, Tasteless, and that has to be disheartening to Symbol. He said he, if he won that first game, he wins 4-0. Did he say? Did he say what happens if he loses? No, he did not. Well. I tell you what, man, Roro has to be feeling fine right now. Well, it's funny, too, because Roro entered into this very confident, and I can pretty much see why. I mean, that was a uh, really complex endgame CDZ. Yeah. And when you, I mean, even the moment where we saw the, the, the Broodlings hitting the Broodlings, yeah. and we're both kind of watching it like, well, I don't think they can 
just run away from this. They're actually sort of stuck here. Now, I, how do you handle that that kind of a, a scenario? Yeah. Uh, they both handled it well. Yeah, but uh, that was crazy, man. That what a game cool. to start off the last Wings Liberty Finals. Yeah, like, no kidding. Uh, it's something you don't see every day. Kind of craziness. Wow. Row up 1-0, man. Although I think this is still going to be a really close uh, finals. I mean, that game itself was so close. It was so hard to tell who was going to win until uh, that final engagement. And I think the real win was not so much that battle, but when the two Spires were taken out, Symbol uh, was then put in a position where he couldn't lose uh, the Brood Lords because he can't remake them. Uh, he won't, and then he won't have the ground superiority uh, to be able to push anywhere. And, um, you know, I, when that was identified, I, I, right when he took out the Spire, when that was identified, uh, Roro just handled it perfectly. Yeah. Really nice play. Indeed. Uh, absolute madness. Uh, right. I, I yeah. loved how Symbol changed his style, but was it enough? Can. It wasn't that game. Is he ever going to be able to beat Roro? Well, we're going to find out soon after the short break. So stay tuned here for the final Wings of Liberty GSL Codex.